A car park is a space specially designed for all road users so that they can park their vehicles safely. In addition to being a functional place to park, parking is also an infrastructure that reduces the CO2 emissions of vehicles that are forced to shut down their engines once parked. The car park is a functional, equipped and secure place where vehicles can park. In the majority of European Union countries and in France, the car park is represented by the symbol P in capital letters. White and blue, panel, this symbol is placed at the entrance of a car park, but you can also see it in the street or on dedicated displays, city maps for example. In the majority of cases, parking in a public car park is subject to a charge based on the duration of parking. The dimensions of a parking space are governed by standards NFP 91-100 and NFP 91-120, public and private car parks. Covered car parks are enclosed areas specially designed for parking vehicles. They are in a closed place or in the basement of a building. They can accommodate both cars and motorcycles. The closed car park consists of several levels or floors. To move from one level to another, drivers use ramps. Some urban constructions such as railway stations or airports for example have the obligation to have underground car parks that comply with the standards and legislation in force for safety, ventilation, and emergency exits in case of fire. Outdoor car parks are single-story spaces, specially designed for parking vehicles. Very economical, they do not need fans and use natural light as lighting unlike covered car parks that consume many more resources, lamps, air vents, fans, etc. When looking for a parking space near major airports or train stations, this is often a real challenge. With one park, find and find in no time the parking you need. In addition to saving up to 60%, you'll be sure to find a place in a secure car park, whether covered or outdoor. Parking a vehicle means stopping and leaving it somewhere. It is important to make sure that the vehicle is parked somewhere where parking is allowed, otherwise the driver may have to pay a fine, or even worse, the vehicle may be clamped. Cars are usually parked in driveways, parking lots, garages, or on the side of the street. Parking a car is easier than parking a large vehicle such as a lorry, truck, or a coach. These large vehicles often have to go to special parks. Rules about parking are part of traffic rules, and these will vary a lot from one country to another. It is illegal to park on the sidewalk. When driving along a road, the driver may see a space big enough for him to park his vehicle. He should stop just after he has passed the space, alongside the next car, then reverse, go backwards, slowly in, aiming towards the curb, then turning the steering wheel so that he just misses the car in front. Then he can adjust, leaving equal room between the two cars. This process is called parallel parking. If the space is wide enough for two cars he can drive forwards into the space instead of reversing in. Parking correctly takes practice and some experience. The driver should not ram or scrub a wheel against the curb. This can puncture the tire. Vehicles can often be parked at the side of the road. They are usually parked parallel to the curb at the edge of the pavement or sidewalk. In some places, parking spaces may be set at a slight 45 degree angle to the curb. Sometimes there are no restrictions, one can park there, free, for as long as one likes. In other places, Parking may not be allowed at all, e.g. where there are double yellow lines, in Britain, or it may be allowed only for limited periods. Parking is not allowed on streets where building construction is in progress. Parking may not be allowed on streets that must be open to emergency traffic such as ambulances and fire trucks. Parking may not be allowed in the winter on certain streets that are marked snow route. These routes must be clear of vehicles so snow plows can get through to do their job. Drivers may have to pay to park. Money can either be put in parking meters which are to be found by every parking bay. There may be a machine nearby where the driver has to pay, and then he receives a ticket which he has to leave inside the car to show that he has paid. The time and date of arrival will be printed on the ticket. If a driver does not pay, or he stays longer than he is allowed, 
he may be given a parking ticket by a traffic warden, a policeman, or a meter maid. These people have the job of patrolling the streets and finding any cars which are illegally parked. A ticket is issued. A fine must be paid. In some cities, the cars may be clamped or booted, in the US. This means that a heavy clamp, boot, is fixed to one of the wheels. The car cannot be driven away. The driver then has to phone the clamping firm to arrange for them to unlock the clamp. This will cost a lot of money. In some places, the car may be taken away by the police. They will take it to a special parking lot under police control. The vehicle is lifted by a crane onto a lorry and taken away. It may be taken away by a tow truck. It costs a lot of money to get one's car back. Car parks and parking lots. Car parks, or, parking lots, are spaces where one can park and leave one's car. The size of these spaces can range from very small to very large. They can be paved with asphalt, concrete, or other material. They can be covered with gravel, or simply bare earth. In urban areas, car parks are usually paved. Slots for cars are measured out and are painted on the pavement. Drivers are expected to park within these slots. Cars are usually parked side by side in a car park. There may be an attendant on duty who will collect a flat fee for parking or issue a ticket noting the driver's arrival time. The fee will be collected when the driver leaves. Sometimes the driver can get the ticket from a mechanical device at the entrance. He will pay the fee when he leaves to an attendant typically stationed in a small booth at the exit. Car parks and parking lots can be dangerous to drivers and their passengers. Some are not, or poorly, lit at night. Persons intent on mischief or criminal activity can operate without being seen. Large parks and lots attract both male and female prostitutes who, if turned away, may retaliate in some way such as keying a vehicle. Other hazards in urban lots are rusty nails on the pavement, broken glass, and vermin such as rats. At a country fair, barn sale, a country concert, or other rural event, drivers may park their vehicles in a meadow that has been mowed and marked off with ropes or bales of hay to guide drivers in and out of the area. An attendant is usually stationed at the entrance to advise drivers on where to park. There is sometimes, but not usually, a fee charged for parking in such an area. A park and ride is a big car park on the edge of a town. Instead of driving into the center of the town, drivers can park there and take a bus or tram into the center. Another type of car park, called an attendant car park is one where the driver leaves the car keys with an attendant. The attendant will then drive the car and park it so that all the cars are bunched up close to one another. This saves space. This type of car park is common at airports. The driver can tell the attendant when he expects to be back. Some car parks are private car parks. They can only be used by people who are visiting the hotel, store, or firm to whom the car park belongs. People who park there illegally may find that their vehicle gets clamped, towed, or booted. On a busy highway, an area just off the main road is available for parking. These are called layovers or rest areas. Sometimes there is a curb. Sometimes there is a restroom or vending machines for drinks and snacks. Sometimes there are full-scale restaurants and souvenir shops. Parking is risky. These areas typically are not supervised and are often the haunt of criminals such as prostitutes and drug dealers. Homosexuals gather in these areas to do their thing and often attract the attention of the police. Some car parks have a few spaces that are reserved for disabled people. These spaces are usually near the exit of the car park or near the front doors of the store, hotel, restaurant etc. This is a convenience for the disabled driver or passenger. The disabled person is able to get into and out of the store or restaurant with little difficulty. These disabled spaces are usually limited to a few slots that are clearly marked. The disabled spaces are usually wider than the others so that the vehicle doors can be opened wide for the disabled person to get out. It is important to display a valid disabled badge or other insignia in or on the vehicle. This will alert store owners and tow drivers that the car is legally parked. 
able drivers should not park in these disabled slots. They risk being towed or fined. Parking garages, or multi-level car parks, are buildings of concrete and steel. They are used for parking vehicles. Some are built on downtown city streets where on-street parking slots may be limited. Parking garages are usually several levels high. The levels are connected by ramps. Many parking garages are open to the weather. They can be cold, snowy, and windy in the winter. Sometimes the street level of a parking garage has shops, cafes, and other businesses. A driver goes into the garage at an entrance. He takes a ticket stamped with his arrival time from an attendant or a mechanical device. He may drive up several ramps to find a parking space. He leaves his ticket in the car where the attendant can see it. When he leaves, he rolls down his window and pays the parking fee at the exit. A barrier is lifted, and he drives away. Parking garages can be dangerous for drivers and their passengers. These buildings are sometimes dimly lit, poorly staffed, and not always watched for potential trouble. There are places in a parking garage for anyone intent on mischief or criminal activity to hide or escape. Enclosed stairways and elevators, lifts, can be dangerous, especially for someone alone. Parking garages are sometimes found near office buildings, hospitals, universities, police stations, and other busy places where land space is limited. Some apartment buildings have their own parking garages. These are for use by tenants in the apartment building. Some buildings have underground parking garages. Once again these garages are to be used solely by residents, employees, and customers. When a person leaves their vehicle temporarily and directs the vehicle to a specific location for a specific period of time, so that their vehicle is safe and they don't have to worry about their vehicle then that is called parking. The specific location could be, a garage or a designated spot allotted to the vehicle, where it can be left for some time. It is essential to ensure that the vehicles are parked safely and in an organized way whether in a public parking area or a private garage. What are the different types of parking? 1. Residential parking When a parking space or permits are designated for residents of a particular area, usually in densely populated areas then those types of parking are referred to as residential parking. Usually, governments or parking authorities regulate residential parking areas so that priority access is given to the people who are living nearby. The main purpose of the residential parking program is to make it easier for the people living nearby so that they don't find it difficult to park near their residential area. 2. Mechanized Parking Mechanized parking is a system where parking organizations take the help of mechanical technology to enhance the use of space in parking so that the process is efficient and comfortable. Systems like automated or robotic parking systems, are designed in a way that the area required for parking the cars gets minimized. They do this by vertically stacking the vehicles or horizontally moving the vehicles. Mechanized parking is very helpful and efficient in enhancing the convenience of users and maximizing parking capacity. 3. On-street parking In on-street parking usually, to park the vehicle the sides of public roads or streets are being used and it is very common in the built-up and residential areas. The cost of development in on-street parking is comparatively low to off-street parking. Physical changes like painting, installation of signage, parking meters, etc., are required in on-street parking. For off-street parking Off-street parking areas are located away from streets and public roads and are separate from the regular flow of traffic. Usually, off-street parking is owned privately or is under the control of public entities, like shopping centers, municipalities, airports, and office buildings. Off-street parking has controlled access points like entrance and exit gates, ticketing systems, and automated barriers. These are very crucial in managing the flow of vehicles, ensuring security, and regulating parking fees, if applicable. Comparatively off-street parking offers a larger capacity and can cater to a higher number of vehicles. 5. Multi-Story Parking Structures or buildings that allow parking at two or more levels where the vehicles can be parked are multi-story parking. Usually, this type of parking uses enormous buildings which are used only for parking. 
The designers who build these types of parking areas keep their buildings away from the high pedestrian areas as it will not be good for the traffic. This type of parking uses the area effectively and efficiently. Structurally, these types of parking are enclosed and have defined parking spaces on each level. 6. Underground Parking Underground parking is the type of parking where the parking is constructed below the ground level and is usually expensive because of the digging process and the structural support that will be made after that. This type of parking is made in urban areas where there is less space for structures like that to be made above ground. This type of parking is usually made under the shopping malls or some working place. However, they can increase parking capacity and foster a more pleasing above ground look and feel. 7. Undercroft Parking Undercroft parking is the type of parking where parking facilities are provided under a building within the area of that building. This type of parking is space efficient and requires careful attention so that it can make the exterior of the ground floor facing the street attractive and active, which will improve the overall look of the building. This type of parking is ideal for locations that have sloping terrain or are in densely populated areas, where a flat building surface can be constructed and parking away from public spaces. 8. Semi-Basement Parking This type of parking provides a solution that gives the benefits of both above-ground and underground parking and the structure also is built in a way that some part of the parking is built partly below the ground level. It is built like that so that it can be a partial basement to a building. Semi-basement parking is built in places where the sloping topography or the density of the area is high so that it can create a level development platform and remove parking from public places. 9. Ground Floor Parking This is the type of parking facility that is constructed on the ground level and is one of the most affordable types of parking that can be constructed cheaply comparatively. This type of parking is usually built on the front of a building or site to create proper space for lively shop fronts, especially the ones that are facing public areas or streets. This type of parking is one of the most popular because of the accessibility and convenience as the entry and exit of the vehicles in this type of parking is simple and subtle. 10. Above Ground Parking This type of parking provides facilities for parking above the ground level or you can say that where the space for parking is elevated. Here, in this type of parking the levels can stretch across multiple floors and this type of parking intends to reduce the disturbance to traffic, pedestrians, or cyclists. You will find this type of parking on the sides of the streets which are not that busy. As we all know today it is not that easy to find land that is affordable for parking. The area for parking is also reducing constantly, especially in the areas that are near cities, towns, or metropolitan cities. Thank you for watching this video.